I'd like you please to imagine this. You're imagine you're in your kitchen, you're making breakfast. There's a knock on the door and it's children's aid. They take your children from your home, your community, and they adopt them out to a different culture. Or imagine you've been in the hospital, you've just had a baby, they tell you your baby hasn't survived, but your baby does survive, and they adopt it out to another culture. It's, it's unimaginable, it's cruel, and it happened. In the 1960s to the 1980s, 20,000 First Nation children were removed from their homes, their families, their communities, and adopted into non-Indigenous families. It's horrific. And this book, Silence to Strength, Writing and Reflection on the 60s Scoop, captures some of these important stories. And I am thrilled that Christine is here to answer some questions about her book. Christine, in the introduction, you, you talk about how writing, um, it was really powerful for you to put pen to paper. Can you expand upon this for our viewers, please? Um, as an Indigenous person, uh, story has always been an important part of our mm -hmm. culture and mm -hmm. ways of uh, imparting knowledge. So I just, um, I wanted to do, I wanted to um, write as a way of healing. And it first started with my memoir, These Are the Stories. And then I decided I was going to um, pitch the idea of writing and reflections from other 60 Scoop survivors because I wanted them to know that they're not alone and that their voices needed to be heard too. Mm -hmm. And Christine, I mean, it, it's an incredible undertaking to reach out to different people and get them to share their their stories. Um, how did you go about finding people who were willing to share their stories? Um, I initially, um, like on my website, I did a, I had initially did a call for submissions. Um, and some people contacted me and just said, okay, I want to do my story, but I'm a scared, I'm a little scared, but I told them that, you know, if you write your story, um, the most important part of my part of being the editor of it was that I wanted their voices to be kept in the story. And I had a couple people pull out um, at the end because I, I, I can just imagine that it must have been traumatic for them to think oh, my story is going to be out there. But um, the people that did write, they've been, uh, they were excellent stories. And it not only was healing for me, but I've been told that it was also healing for them too. So, and I I thought, I felt that was like the most positive uh, feedback I got from it, from doing this project, I mean. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's it's incredible like and everyone has a different story but it's certainly you can see the pattern of isolation and loneliness and just the the trauma is just it's un, it's unimaginable it's just unimaginable and i think it's so important for canadians to understand that this was a very real thing that happened a systematic removal of children from from their families um what was this your main objective as well with with getting the book out christine uh yes i um uh, i get i get uh angry just like many other indigenous people when people sit there and 
if a story if a story comes out they say oh we just need to get over it um you don't just get over somebody yanking you from your family or your culture or traditions mm -hmm. and then you have you have you have a uh, you're with like possibly an abusive and uh not adoptive family or all the things that you that everyone experienced within their stories um so i wanted i wanted this book to basically tell people that you know you need to hear our stories and you need to listen mm -hmm. well or at least be open-minded to listening or reading um and realize that you know there there's a lot more behind uh the issues that indigenous people face yeah yeah it was incredible um as a reader you know we're going through the stories like i you just you just think it's so hard to imagine that there's so much pain out there but I also really appreciated and thought it was one. There's also a lot of hope in the stories, yeah, that are being told. Can you can you talk about what role hope plays in the future for Indigenous people? Um, from the context of what people wrote, a lot of them felt connected after they did find their biological families or um, it showed them that they were resilient and that they didn't give up. And for me, and that, that's hope in itself. Yeah, I was just so in awe and so moved by the stories. And I just think, I'm going to hold it up again because I think it's such a, oops, there's those flowers in the way again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like silence to strength. It's, I mean, <laughs> writing and reflections on the 60s scoop. And there's 17 stories in the book. It's published by Kegadance Press. And the cover by George Littlechild is just, oh, there's those flowers again, is just gorgeous really really gorgeous and it was such an honor to read these stories and also an honor to speak with you Christine today and I'm going to put links down below in the description box so viewers can purchase a copy of Silence to Strength I highly recommend it um, I, I, I can't recommend it enough I think it's a book that all Canadians should read because residential schools we're learning more about that and the 60s scoop is also another issue that we should be more aware of too. Christine Megwitch, 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 it's been a pleasure. Megwitch.